Skaters these days come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, and even though every type of skater out there has a few positives, they also have a few negatives as well. In this video, we're going to go over some of the more common types of skaters you'll see, and a few downsides that come with them. If any good ones were missed, go ahead and share them in the comments, and with that said, let's get right into it. To start off with, we have the hill skater. This skater has seemingly mastered the art of skating down hills, and reaching speeds that would easily toss off the average skateboarder. These people will charge through cracks and potholes and ride out speed wobbles like they're nothing. A lot of hill skaters are based in San Francisco due to the abundance of steep terrain there, but you can also find them worldwide. The main complaint people have with hill skaters is that it can be a bit sketchy if you don't know what you're doing. Now, you could argue that just driving down the road is also dangerous since car accidents happen every single day. I'm no scientist, but if I had to guess, I'd say car crashes are much more dangerous than skating. Now, if you do happen to get into an accident, with Morgan & Morgan, it's incredibly easy to submit a claim for personal injury, and they happen to be today's video sponsor. A lot of people get hurt due to the negligence of others, but unfortunately, they never do anything about it because they're not sure how. With Morgan & Morgan, it's super easy, and you can literally submit a claim without ever having to leave the couch. They're a modern law firm that makes the process simple. They allow you to submit case details, sign contracts, and upload documents all from your phone. If you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan and submit a claim in just 8 clicks or less. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash skatebox or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your phone. Thanks again to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. For number 2, we have the Rich Skater. The Rich Skater is the kid whose family is loaded. Now, sometimes these skaters are actually very wealthy. But other times, these skaters are just slightly above middle class, and the rest of us simply assume they're rich since we all grew up so poor. Either way, this skater clearly has more money than the average person at the park. They always have new gear, they always have money for food, and they always get to go on trips to cool cities or to places like Woodward or Street League. There's a good chance their family drives a Suburban or an Escalade, they usually have a hot mom, and they also tend to be a park rat. Overall, they're not too bad, but the main downside to these skaters is that they can sometimes be a little too entitled and pampered. Skateboarders are typically pretty rough and scrappy, so if a rich skater is at the park acting spoiled, it's not always the best mix. Number 3 on the list is the heavy skater. These are skaters who are a little more heavy set than most people. For a while, heavier skaters had a stereotype that they weren't the most skillful, but in recent years, that started to change. A lot of heavier skaters are actually really good at skating, and it's cool to see people skating regardless of their size. Obviously, it's not the most common since skateboarding is much easier if you're lighter, but that's part of why it's so respectable when you do see bigger people skate. Now, the drawback of being a heavier skater is that breaking boards is a much more frequent occurrence, especially if you're doing flip tricks. It's not quite as big of an issue when you're skating transition, but for most street obstacles, it can definitely be a problem. This doesn't take long to start getting expensive, especially when you're paying $40 to $50 per board. Also, in the rare situation where a smaller skater happens to have a collision with a larger skater at the skate park, it typically doesn't end well. Moving on, we have the fashion skater. This is the type of skater who's always super concerned with fashion and the way that they look. They meticulously plan out their outfits before they go skate, they have no problem spending hundreds or even thousands of dollars on clothes, and they likely have more money tied up in clothing than they do in their bank account. These skaters literally spend hours scanning through Grailed, eBay, Depop, and Poshmark, hunting for clothes for their next Instagram picture. With fashion skaters, most of them are pretty good at skating, and even if you don't like the way they dress, you gotta admit, it is impressive that they're able to skate in some of the outfits that they wear. This type of skater tends to be controversial since a lot of people hate on the fact that they will spend thousands of dollars on clothes that they skate in and it's often seen as a person just looking for attention. Now, honestly, I've seen people argue for both sides of this, so I'm interested to see what you guys think in the comments. The next type of skater is the manual skater. For whatever reason, some skaters are just drawn to certain obstacles. And for this skater, that obstacle is a manual pad. While most skaters struggle to do any type of manual outside of the basics, manual skaters have no problem doing super technical combos filled with multiple reverts and whatever this is. These skaters can hold a manual for pretty much an indefinite amount of time if needed, and they have no problem demonstrating by manualing laps around the park. 
The problem with manual skaters is even if they're really good, manuals are notorious for taking a long time to land. So if you get stuck filming a clip for them, you might as well set up a lawn chair and an umbrella and kiss the rest of your session goodbye because you're going to be there for a while. Another type of skater you've probably seen is the healthy skater. Not that long ago, healthy skaters didn't even exist. In fact, I'd even say that the term healthy skater was an oxymoron. These days though, there's a growing number of skateboarders focused on health and wellness. And this type of skateboarder is pretty easy to spot. You can often find them in the corner of the park doing stretches or using a muscle massager before or after their session. They usually post super healthy looking meals, they have a regimented gym schedule, and saunas and ice baths are a normal part of their routine. If you pay attention, there's almost a direct correlation between a skateboarder's age and how likely they are to be a healthy skater, with the majority of them being over the age of 25. Some people like to poke fun at this type of skater, but if we're being honest, they're doing things that most of us know we should probably be doing ourselves, so you can't really hate on them too much. The main downside is when you see someone else being healthy while you're eating a gas station burrito and drinking a Red Bull after pulling an all-nighter, it can force you to do a little self-reflection. The next type of skater is the Instagram girl skater. These are female skateboarders who typically have a large following on Instagram that usually consists of thirsty dudes begging for the chance to teach them how to kickflip. This type of skater used to get a lot of hate, but at this point, it seems like people have warmed up to the idea. For the longest time, people didn't like that girls who weren't the most skilled were getting more attention than other, more skillful skateboarders simply because of the way they looked. However, it seems like skaters have come to accept the fact that people are going to skate and post clips of it, and that's inevitably going to lead to attractive girls gaining a large following. This is another hot button in skateboarding, so rather than give an opinion on it one way or the other, I'll leave it to you guys to battle it out in the comments. Up next on the list is the manager skater. These are the people who manage the rest of the skate crew and pretty much coordinate everything that happens. For example, they're the ones who plan out skate trips and they're usually the driving force behind filming a skate video. The funny thing is, a lot of times, this person isn't even the best skater. Instead, they're just a passionate skateboarder who wants to see other skaters do well. This person can often be the filmer or photographer of the group but sometimes they're just a normal skater who's slightly more ambitious. Skateboarders are notorious for being a little lazy and unorganized, so having a group member who's actually on top of things is pretty crucial. The only drawback to this type of skater is that even though they act as a manager of the group, depending on the person, they're not always a good manager, which can definitely cause problems considering how dysfunctional skaters can be. Another type of skateboarder you'll see is the prodigy. This is the kid who learned how to ride a board before they could even walk, they were already doing kickflips before they started school, and they were skating handrails before they could ride in a car without a booster seat. They're typically the best skateboarder in their group, and even if they aren't the most skilled all around, they're definitely the most skilled for their age. This is the local skater that everyone swears is going to go pro. They win all of the local contests, they have sponsorships from a variety of skate companies, and they're constantly putting out new footage. Not only does skateboarding come naturally to these people, but they spend so much time skating that they get better at an exponential pace. The downside to these skaters is that when someone gets good at skating at a young age, they can often be a little arrogant. Of course, this isn't always the case, but if you've been around kids who are really good for their age, you've probably noticed that it's a fairly common theme. So next up, we have the broke skater, which is definitely one of the most common types of skaters out there. Broke skaters are pretty much the exact opposite of rich skaters. They're always skating worn out gear, they never have money for food unless it's from a gas station or a fast food restaurant, and the only way they're going on a trip somewhere is if there's three to four other broke skaters crammed into an old beat up car that they somehow manage to fill up with half a tank of gas. When it comes to broke skaters, there's a ton of drawbacks. They're usually loud, they're often dirty, and if we're being honest, like most skaters, they're a bit of a nuisance to the public. Now, with that said, broke skaters also come with a lot of positives. They're always resourceful, and they're also a lot more resilient. Maybe I'm a bit biased because I grew up as a broke skater, but I feel like most other skaters would agree. The broke skater is the driving force behind skateboarding in general, and they're a major part of what makes skateboarding as great as it is. 
If any good ones were missed, go ahead and drop them down in the comments. Be sure to check out the links in the description. And with that said, thanks for watching.